Hey developers, I'm back. Today we are looking at render functions, but we're gonna look at a little bit more advanced use cases of it. We're gonna create this complete TV finder without using templates at all. We're gonna construct it using render functions. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how to use this. This is more of an advanced feature. So if you're looking for some basic information about render functions, I actually just did a video last week on it. I'll put a link in the description. You can check that out. And we go into a little bit of detail about how it works. This video is really gonna go into to some more advanced topics. So strap in and uh, watch all the way to the end. I think you'll learn something. And you can see from this app right here, we just basically type in whatever you want. I don't know, Winter Soldier just came out. I've been watching it on Disney Plus. It's really cool. And you can see here, I actually have the information about it. I guess the cover art, the name of it, and also anything else that has this Winter Soldier. I guess there's Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy, and Ouija Older Sister. So this is just a really simple app, but I think it really illustrates like how powerful render functions are and some of the things you can do with them. Now, as always, you're probably wondering, do I really need to use render functions? And I think yes is the answer that there are some scenarios where you need to jump into render functions because you just can't do everything you can in render functions that you can do inside your template. So so anytime you want to do some advanced JavaScript type things, things that you may be doing inside React, render functions is a great way to do it because you can get a little bit more access closer to the actual view templates and the V nodes that construct view up itself. All right, so here is our app so far. We don't have too much in it, but you can see here, this is our heading. We actually created this in a previous video, but don't worry if you haven't seen the other video, just uh, go ahead and keep continue watching. We're not gonna go into this. Basically, this is how we created this heading right here. Our main app is in our app.view, and I'll make sure I'll put a link to this in the description below so you guys can follow along. Here, all it is is a template as this heading, and I'm using this script setup. And by the way, I am using Vue.js 3, so we're gonna use some of the Vue.js 3 features. Like you'd see here, this is an experimental feature which allows you just to put script set up and then you can import components in this way. It makes writing view really fun. I, I really like the way that view three sets this up. I did create a new component called my shows and this is where we're going to construct our basic app from scratch here using the render function and I'll show you how that works. Also, if you guys are interested in Vue.js, React, Angular, I'm a big fan of all those. I have a mailing list. I'll give you a free cheat sheet. I'll give you updates anytime I do new videos. I give giveaways. I'll put a link in the description below. Go ahead and sign up for it, check it out. And yeah, you can actually get a free Vue.js cheat sheet, which will help you if you're starting off with Vue. If you're more advanced, because you're, you're watching this, I would check in with that too, because I do go over some advanced concepts in Vue. All right, so here is it. I'm gonna go ahead and hide my camera here. So you can get see the full screen. We're just gonna just jump right into this code here. So I think the first thing we wanna do with this TV Finder app is see if we can go in, have it show the input box and the button and as well as the form control around it. Now remember when you're using return functions like this, now this is the my shows, we already have it inside our app view here, is you always return back these uh, render functions with an actual function here. So we have to do the little arrow function. It's the way I like to do it. And now we need to uh, actually re-render something. So if, and if you've seen my previous video or not, best way of doing that is to use this H. So I'm gonna import, import it in here. We're gonna import H from view, and then we can actually pass values in. So we're gonna use lowercase h here. This is kind of like, like used to be called create element in previous versions, but we're not gonna do that. And also in view three, we actually return back our view nodes. We can do it directly from our setup function. You can also create a, um, a render function up here, but we're not gonna do that because we're using view three and it has a setup. And remember the first option or argument inside the h is what sort of tag we want. So we're gonna do a div. And then the second one we want to do is what uh, styles or attributes we wanna put in. And the third one is like an array of objects or the values inside the div tag. So I'm just gonna make sure this works. I'm gonna put a hello world. I'm gonna make sure that I have it in here. So I'm gonna import in my shows. And you know, you can put this in a kebab casing too. So I'll just do this. Cool, so we know we have hello world, so that's good. But really what we wanna start off with is a form. We want to have a form here. So let's add in a form. And right now I'm not going to worry about styles or anything. And the next thing we want to do is we have a we have an array here. And this array is going to be what's inside the form. And the first thing we want to add in, inside the form is a is an input. So I'm going to put an input here. And then inside the input, once again, I'm not going to worry about any attributes or any click handlers or anything, but that's normally what you would put here. So I'm just going to leave yeah, just have an input here. And the next thing I wanna do is have a button. And then we're gonna have a button. And I want a name for the button, I'm gonna call it press me. All right, I'm gonna save it. Cool, so here we have created the input. 
We get created a press meet and it actually is surrounded by a form too. If we look inside the inspect here, look at it. Can't probably see very well. But yeah, here's a form. So we definitely have it in this form. Uh, we want to be able to track like what a person is typing. So I think that's the next thing we wanna do. We wanna see if someone types something in here. By the way, when you hit press me, it's actually doing a submit. We wanna not do a submit, we wanna change that. And we also wanna kinda capture what people are typing. I, I think the best thing to do right now is let's add some styles to this. Remember this second parameter is your attributes. And so at first I wanna put a style tag on here and you can actually just put styles right in here. I'm gonna put color red, I'm gonna put a max width of 768 pixels and margin auto. You probably won't see any difference here, but that's that. And also I wanna add a on click handler. I'm gonna hit enter here. I'm gonna add in something called on submit. So anytime a submit happens on here, it's going to, it's gonna, event's gonna be emitted. And I just wanna do a prevent default. So it, that way it doesn't automatically try to submit the form. And now if I hit something in here and I hit enter, it's not doing an automatic submit, which is good. So we've created uh we've made a little bit of made a little bit of progress so the next thing i want to do is can i like just type something in here and have it be saved somewhere so remember the second one here here's our input we don't have any attributes in there so let's add some attributes and once again it's an object so i want to do an on a on change so anytime the value changes in here we're gonna have an event that triggers and this is going to go to input uh, so this is this kind of interesting. What do we want to do with this input? I'm going to create a new value here, a new ref that saves this information somewhere. So I'm going to create a few of them. And so inside this setup function, I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to create an input value to have it equal nothing. I'm going to have a shows, which we're going to have it saved as right now as a null. And so this ref here is a way to create reactive properties inside the setup function inside view three. And we're gonna, we might even have some errors. So I'm gonna have that equal null too. And we already imported in ref here in line five, so we're good there. So now, so we have this event and we have this on change. And I can actually now, since I have this input value, let's do the input value equals event.target.value. So now we, this input value should be updated every time the change event happens. Oops, let me delete that. Okay, deleted the extra f. So we're still back to where we were. So now we have this input value and we can make this ref too if we wanted. And if we do this, let's say here in this, uh, by the way, we're gonna delete this template so we're no longer using it. We have to keep the script tag. So if we wanna see this actually work, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this from on change to on input. I'm gonna console log that uh, input value and I'm gonna refresh it. And I'm just gonna show in my inspector, I'm gonna go to the console and as I type, you can see here down here, it automatically updates. So we know that it's it's working, perfect. But this still isn't very useful. Nothing does anything. So let, let's add a new function in to do searching. So I'm gonna create this function. I'm gonna call it const search text. And then the last thing I wanna do is I wanna set the shows value. So since we're using this ref here, we have value is the way we actually grab the, the data out of it. So we're gonna do shows value and I'm gonna wait and I'm going to do the search T, which uh, I call it search T. And then I'm gonna grab JSON. I'm gonna do dot JSON dot catch. And then we'll do that error dot value equals E. And then I'll just console log the shows um, that value. Cool, so now we have this new search text which should be able to actually do the searching for us. And now we can kind of do some fun things here. We can have it do search on, uh, on, on actually pressing the button. So what we're gonna do here is on this button, I'm gonna add in a on and make sure I have a comma here. I'm gonna do an on click handler. And it's always camel case like this. It's gonna be async, have this arrow function and I'm gonna do search text and I'm gonna pass in that input value that we had before. And I think it's gonna be input value dot value. And then also I wanna actually display the information that we got. <laughs> so it's uh, useful. So we can right here after this H, I'm gonna put another comma and I'm going to create another H tag, H that is a div tag. Uh, I'm gonna put a class on it of shows. And for right now, let's, uh, we'll put a, an array here. I wonder if I can just grab the data out of it. 
Okay, so actually let's make a couple of changes here. Instead of having this input value, let's have input value.value value, because we made it a reference. And instead of having this shows value here, let's see if we can iterate over that. Now we know for a fact that the shows.value is an array of shows. So maybe a better way of doing this is we're going to do shows.value.map and we're gonna have each show come out of here. We're going to create basically uh, the information we want. So we're gonna create an H here. Uh, one last thing we need to do is actually we need to return something. So I'm actually just mapping through this, but you can see here I'm not returning anything. So if I add a return statement, have it return everything. Let's see if that works for us. I'm going to type in winter here. Cool. So now, cool. So now I have all the information here. So I've put winter soldier. Cool. So now I have... Uh, have it all working here, which is perfect. I know this did move over to the left, which I think is just uh, some CSS that we could change, but cool, it's working. Uh, another thing we can do also is, uh, instead of having this return here, since we're using an arrow function, we could try to get rid of the arrow function, get rid of the semicolon and save it. And then if we refresh it and then try again, winter soldier, cool. So it's still working as we expected it. Uh, everything is working great there. Now, one thing we probably should do is we have this errors, let error. Let's go ahead and check for that. So nice thing about this is we can just check for it. So we can do error.value. If the error.value is there, then we should probably return something like, I don't know, a div with error.value. So whatever the error is. Otherwise, we're going to return the show.value. So just do a quick ternary value in there. So that'll check for that and we can just make sure it still works. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, another thing we can do is probably go ahead and look at how hard it would be to create like a slot and have slot data show up for us. So if you remember correctly, if you look at the app view, we have this opening and closing brackets. And if I put something in here, like, I don't know, hello world and save it and I refresh it here, it never shows up anywhere. So let's say we wanted to show that, have that show up. So we can go back to my shows. I'm gonna create a slot here. I'm gonna put it at the bottom. I'm gonna call it the default slot. So we don't know if the slot will have anything in it or not. So it's always a good idea to check it. And we, the way we do that, we do const slot equals slots dot default. And we need to grab slots from somewhere. So we can actually destructure it from here. So we'll put in an underscore and we'll grab in slots. That's from the setup function. So we'll go slots dot default if it's there, then go ahead and show the slots.default function. Otherwise we'll turn nothing. And we can just insert this in the slot anywhere we want. So right above the input, I suppose, if we wanted it, we can just put in SC. Oops, I misspelled it. It's supposed to be slot, not SC. Refresh it, cool. So here's our hello world. So now we have our slot data if we wanted to insert it in somewhere. And one nice thing too is we can actually pass information uh, about the show from this my shows back up to the app using a scope slot. So I wanted to show you how that might work. So we have this slot here. I'm going to rename this to SC because um, I'm going to call it sl uh, scope slot, SS, scope slot. And then we're going to change this name to SS. But if we want, we can pass information back up. So I can, the way you do that is inside the parentheses, it's almost like a function we can pass values in an object here. So I'm gonna pass in shows, and we're gonna call shows.value. I'm gonna do a const ss, and I'm gonna do the show. If the slots.sc exists, then we're gonna send the sc with the show. Otherwise, if it doesn't exist, we're gonna send the empty array back. So if I do that, okay, it's working again. <laughs> and now we should have access to it in the app. So I'm gonna go back to the app, and let's say we wanted to create something that computes the average score of all the uh, shows that are returned back. So I'm gonna copy and paste this from a, another screen. Okay, so now I have this computed average. And basically this takes uh, parameter shows and does a reduce on it and it divides it by the length. So we have the average for it. And now since I have something in here, I'm going to do a template and I'm gonna close the template 
And this is essentially where I can put in scope slots. So there's a couple ways to do that. You can do V slot and the colon and then the name of the slot, which would be SC. Or a shorthand for that is I can put this pound sign SC and then I can grab the data I want out of it. I want to grab out of it shows that were passed in shows like this. So now I can do something like this in H3 V if shows dot length. So if it doesn't have anything back, we don't want to try to calculate an average because that wouldn't make sense. Then we can put in here average score is the computed average that we just created. We're going to pass in the shows and then we'll make it uh, we'll do two fix so it's up to two, two decimals places out. So if I did this right, let's see if it works. So I'm typing winter. Cool, so I have an average score of 14.22, which is uh, great. If I put in, I don't know, ASDF, it's average score 2.11. So lower the score, like more, like worse these shows are. I don't know if we put in like Breaking Bad. Yeah, it's a little higher, 11.33. Uh, so you see, yeah, this we have created a fully functional app using render functions. There's a few gotchas around the way. It's easy to mess this up. Like right here, I forgot to return back uh, the values. You always gotta return them back when you're using like a map, but it's cool. This feels a little bit like React, so I can map over things. I can grab data, return them back. Uh, yeah, it works really great. So let me know in the comments below what you think. We even do, can do scope slots like this. Leave a comment below. I really appreciate it. And if you guys like these videos, Make sure to click on, look in the description and you can sign up for my mailing list and you'll, I'll let you know when I have the next ones out. Thanks.